you need to check out this new AI code editor called Windsurf. It's similar to Cursor in that it's based on a fork of VS Code, but I think it's a little bit better, and I'll explain that as I go here. So let's build a full stack application, and we'll even include an AI powered assistant powered by Llama. Okay, so I'll throw the link in the description to how to download this, but once you do, it's just simple. Just run through a few wizards, so you select your key bindings. I usually just select VS Code for this. And then choose your theme. Tokyo Night sounds right up my alley. Then just get signed up, and you can use Gmail account, which I have used here. Then we can open the Windsurf Editor. And I've started with a totally empty folder. We're going totally from scratch here. And you'll find the most powerful feature in Windsurf is called Cascade. You can always click Control or Command L, and it brings it up on the right-hand side. And you can think of this as an AI agent, which will take your prompt and then write a bunch of code and also run commands, load dependencies, run test servers, all that kind of stuff on your behalf. We'll start off here with saying landing page for app using Next.js and ShadCN. And I'll explain in a second why I chose those two. And we want this for a bike shop. We want a simple page with dark mode capabilities. And the reason I chose Next.js is it's really popular, it's dead easy to deploy in Vercel, and it makes building complete business applications simple because it handles both what the customer sees on the front end and also the back end business logic all in one place. Plus it loads faster and it ranks better in Google searches. So here you see it stop pretty quickly and ask to run create next app. And this is one thing that I've liked better in Windsurf versus Cursor. In Cursor, from my experience, it just starts coding. It doesn't run a command like this to load the scaffolding, which I think is actually the right play here. Let's let this cook for a few minutes and see what it gives us. A few moments later. Okay, it's done but I still see some errors. And this is actually very common in my experience. So the way you see this is the files in red are the ones with the problems. And usually all I have to do is go to these files and then find the issues, which are underlined by the squiggly red lines, click on them and say, Windsurf, explain and fix the problem. And then it puts that error back in Cascade chat. And in most cases it fixes it. And this part I've also found works a bit better than it does in Cursor. All right, there we go. All the errors are gone. Let's just ask it to load the test server. So this is the result of that first prompt. It's nice and simple, which is actually what I want. I just want to build a foundation here that I can iterate on later and build new components as I go. But this foundation has some nice features. It's responsive. So if I move the screen around here, it readjusts those boxes. So it works on a mobile device. It has dark mode already working. So if I use a toggle here, and that works. I really like using ShadCN for these UI components. You can just plug them in. They look good just by default. And the AI seems to be really good at moving them around or customizing them. So now let's build the back end for this application. And what I ultimately want is for it to look in a database of bike purchases. So the user can type a question such as what parts are on my bike or how long is the warranty, that kind of stuff, and get a response from the AI. Let's hop back into the Windsurf editor. And to do major changes like this, I like to have a new cascade window. So if I open that up, look at the old one here, but let's start a new conversation. And let's put in the prompt, add an AI back into this application. When the user clicks customer help, that's gonna be a new button. It should open up a chat interface where the user can chat with the AI chatbot powered by Grok using the latest Llama model. And then I'll fill this in manually. When it's building this, the AI model, in this case, Claw 3.5 Sonnet, doesn't know the latest version of Llama. So I'm just gonna tell it, I'll fill that model in myself. And I'm also gonna say, this grow connection should be implemented server side on this Next.js application. And you see to do that, it's making an API route and it's adding route.ts. I like to build my applications this way. So then if I change the model or change things later in the back end, I can just change it there. I don't have to change my front end at all. My front end stays the same. And now it's gonna install the grow SDK for me on a suggested terminal command as well as other React dialogues that it's gonna use for that chatbot. But this one part of Windsurf, actually I think they could still improve on a bit. It's actually giving you the code to put in the API key, but it doesn't create that file for you. So you have to create that file manually and then copy in that code. Okay, now let's create it. Now we can just say insert. Let's go grab our API key. So I'm logging to Grok and I'll put a link to this in the description. I'm still actually amazed that this is free. So you can just get an API key here and use the latest version of Llama totally for free. And it's really fast. Let's create our API key. We'll copy that and put it right into our code. Okay, with that out of the way, now we have to look where it created our route.ts, and that's usually under the API slash chat folder. We see it here. And then under that, you'll see where it says the model. So this one we want to update to the latest one, because right now it's Llama 2, which is a bit old. So if I go back to Grok and go to the playground, I can select the latest Llama models. And they used to have it so they had a text version and a vision version. Now they just combine it all into one. So what you want is the highest version one with the most parameters that says vision on it. So as of this recording, that's 3.2 90 billion parameter with vision. And then you can just say view code 
and then I'll give you the model right in here. So you can just copy and paste this in. So let's go back in here and replace that. And then I'll just restart my test server and try it out. All right, this looks good. So it's added the nice customer help button at the top. So if I click on that and just say, what type of bike do I have? It's gonna respond that it basically doesn't know. And that's because right now it's just passing to Grok and then to Llama, no context. So it's just like using unfiltered Llama at this point. But it's really good that the UI looks good. Everything's working. Our connection to Grok's working. So all that's all good. So now let's add a bit more complexity to this. Let's add in some customer data. Then the Llama model can look through that customer data, find the bike for that user, and then return information specifically for their purchase. Okay, so now it starts to get fun. So let's open up another cascade window and put in here, store this in a data file and have AI reference it for customer information. And then I'm passing in a big data file, which all, all fake data, but each record has a customer ID, which will be a Gmail account for that user and then what kind of bike they bought. And some information about it, such as tire size, what type of frame it is, etc. And how much they paid for it. So now Windsurf is actually creating a CSV file for me, which stands for comma separated values, which is basically just a data file. It's gonna put in the directory. So that's great. Now if you look in the data file, we have this nice CSV file nicely formatted for us. And so we'll continue on and say, load this in as context for the Grok Llama AI call. So it has access to the customer data. So now what it should do is, pass in all that data from that CSV file into Llama. And so when we start a new chat, it's gonna have access to all this information so it can answer specific questions for the customer. And to do that, it's actually creating another route. It's called customerdata.ts. It's also installing the packages needed to parse the CSV file. And Windsurf did a really good job of implementing it. So what it did was it first it added a assistant message. So basically saying I'm a bike shop assistant. You can get information about customer purchases, et cetera. And then further down, it actually added the customer data response. And so this is where it's calling that API created to get that customer data back in a JSON format and then pass it in as context into the Llama model. So now when you load up the chatbot, it should have all that customer data available to it. Let's see if it works. So let's try this out. So we go back to customer help and now the chatbot actually introduces itself. It says, hello, I'm your bike shop assistant. And it says what it can help us with. So if we paste in here, one of those email addresses we have in our customer data and say, I bought a bike from your shop a while back, but I can't remember the size. So now it returns a personalized message. It tells us what kind of bike we purchased and the frame size of the bike, so which is exactly what we asked for. So that works great. The only problem is it's actually loading in all the customer data and then relying on us to put our email address in here to figure out who's who. So what we need to add is authentication. We need the user to be able to log in with their Gmail account authenticate with Google, and then come back and open the chatbot with only their data showing up in context. So this is gonna be the hardest part yet. Let's see if Windsurf can build it. I did a project a while back using this authentication framework called Clerk, and it worked really well for me. So I'm gonna ask Windsurf to use this particular framework to get that authentication going quickly. So let's open up a new Cascade session. And this time for the prompt, we're gonna say, I wanna implement authentication to this application using Clerk. So I tell it right here what I wanna use. And then I say when the user lands on the website, they have to log in with a Gmail account first before seeing the customer help. Then when they log in, their Gmail account will be passed to the data lookup API. So only that user's info is returned and the AI assistant will give them a personal greeting and only load that user's data. So I'm really curious to know if it actually will implement Clark correctly, which would be huge if it can do it. Launch the app again, it takes me to this, which isn't really what I wanted. I wanted to go to that landing page and just show me a login icon. But instead, it just takes over the whole page and makes me sign in first. And there's also some issues with the colors and formatting here, but at least I have the Gmail button. So let's just click on that. And then it's going to log me in. And I change the sample data to add my own email address in there. And it brings back the right information, which is good. So that part's good. But now we've lost our chatbot and everything. So it feels like one step forward, two steps back now. We've kind of destroyed the application, but we have authentication working. So let me go back to Cascade, tell it what happened, and see if it can fix this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't save that project. It just went to a downward spiral where some files were deleted by the agent and I just couldn't get back to it. So I had to start again from scratch with a blank folder. It actually worked much better the second time. I did make some tweaks to the prompts, which I think worked a bit better. And I'll put all those prompts in the description of the video. And the end result was this website, which I think actually looks a bit better than that first one. It has all the same functionality, but it just looks a little bit cleaner. And now you notice when you go to this application, it just has a sign in button. You can't get customer help without signing in. So click on sign in. It's gonna pop up with that clerk window from that framework I was telling you about. And now once I log in, it just shows my, my email address right here. 
And now it shows me the customer help. So I can't get to this without signing in first. And if I click on the customer help, it's gonna come right away and say, welcome back, because I did this once before. And it says, I can see what kind of bike you have. And it tells me I have a Trek. I'm now gonna ask it what wheel size it is. And it comes back with 700C, which is exactly what was in that customer data file. So it's actually successfully retrieved just my record based on the email address I'm actually authenticating with to Google and brought back that data and put it into the AI chatbot. And I actually find a feature like this very useful from the consumer's perspective. Like I bought a bike a couple of years ago and I'm looking for parts and replacement parts. And this would be so useful. Like I just log in, it would tell me when I bought the bike, some part numbers, that kind of thing. And it's actually really good for the business as well because you could say, you know, sell tune-ups on here. You could say, I got the part you're looking for in stock. You can bring your bike in tomorrow. I can install it for you. So you can program the AI to really do some upselling as well. I'm really impressed with Windsurf. It's more than just a code editor. It really uses AI to build your entire application for you. So make sure you check it out. I hope you enjoyed the video and have an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.